So, I'm going to show you what a couple of atoms look like if they're just bouncing back and forth with that kind of energy, or with some energy, with this kind of potential. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. So I'm, I'm hoping that you had this basic idea in mind uh, when you think of two things that are bonded together but, but have some thermal energy. That if they're stuck together but you give them some thermal energy then they can bounce back and forth. That's what this picture is meant to to show you for interactions. I took two things that were stuck together. They would be at their bond energy if they had no thermal energy. I gave them a little bit of energy. So I raised the energy above this minimum. So the total energy is maybe here. What is the kinetic energy here? Well, when the total energy is equal to potential, the kinetic is zero. So it's zero there and it's zero here because these are the two locations that the total energy is equal to the potential energy, so kinetic is zero. Those are called turning points. If they're, go if they're moving apart, they only get that far before they stop and come back again. So those turning points are where they turn from going apart and come back or they turn from coming together and start apart again. And you can see that that's what's going on. At the, when they're far apart, they stop. Then their kinetic energy goes up as they come together. And then it comes back down again when they get too close together. It sto they stop again. That's where kinetic energy is zero. And then they come back apart. And that's all they're doing. The potential energy is going down, up, down, up as they go apart, closer together, apart, closer together. The kinetic energy, up, down, up, down. Kinetic energy is biggest around the center. Let's see. Yeah. So the rest of the graph is not happening here because we don't have enough energy to make it happen. They never get this far apart. If they're never this far apart, would we call that bonded or unbonded? <coughs> if two things that hang on to each other and never get very far apart are bonded. If they get very far apart, you can't call that a bond anymore. Yeah? So is that supposed to be like two atoms that are neutral to one another? Or does it matter? Whether Pardon me, two atoms that are neutral? They're neutral. It, it doesn't really matter. This is a generic picture. I mean, the strictly speaking, the exact Leonard Jones potential is really good for two inert gas atoms, you know, it's van der Waals forces, but, but the generic idea is the same. Whether they're neutral or whether the atoms are, you know, ions, it, it, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a bond, then there will be an attraction, there will be a, a bond length, and if you add thermal energy, it will oscillate around that as if it were connected by a spring. So one model of molecules is when you put, a, is when you, put uh, you know, sticks between balls so the atoms and the bonds are represented by sticks. A better model is a spring model because now the atoms can move back and forth. And even better than that would be, a, you know, Leonard Jones potential. <laughs> yeah? Is there like some R distance at which you can no longer call it bonded? Um, or call it bonded or is it just from the graph? The, the basic idea is can they, do they always, is there a maximum distance apart? If there's a maximum distance at which they stop and come back together, then they're bonded. Strictly speaking. Practically, in this world, two atoms that are in this room and are barely stuck together. So, so they go, you know, they barely are stuck together. They might get very far apart, but then they come back together. If they were doing that on their own 
and then they're in this room, so they're getting blasted by all their atoms all the time. Are, is that, are we going to call that bonded? No, the other atoms are going to immediately bust them apart. So, so bonded, practically speaking, will be when they're really close together and, and not this, uh, you know, how far apart can they get when the energy, when the total energy is right here? Well, they can only get that far apart. What if the total energy was here? Really, really close to zero. So that they could get this far apart. Uh, I would call them bonded in, in this, if they were isolated because they would get very far apart and then they would come back together. But in the real world, when they're mixed with other gases, that kind of thing is not going to last. Either it'll go down to this because they'll transfer energy away and the en total energy will go down a little bit and it'll be an obvious bond. Or something will hit them and the total energy will go up and it'll be obviously broken. So it's a... It, th this right here where there's only two atoms, uh, that's a, not a realistic kind of a situation. It's one that we can think about this problem, but it's not one that uh, is going to come up in, in a real world in a gas. So, energies, kinetic energy, potential energy, total energy. What do you see that's interesting about those three? Anything? Total energy, completely constant. Why is that? Because this box does not have anything else in it. <laughs> Those are just sitting there. That's what's fake about this whole thing. And they're not interacting with anything else. They have no interaction with the outside world, so their total energy is constant. So all they're doing is their kinetic energy is going up and down, and their potential energy is going down and up, and that's the only thing that's happening. So the total energy right now is minus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 21. And my question is going to be, what if I add kinetic energy of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 21? So it's, the total energy is still going to be negative. I, I'm going to add kinetic energy. Why do I add kinetic energy? Well. That's the only thing the simulation will let me do. Uh, it has changed kinetic energy. And so I can add energy in that way. And all it does is it speeds everything up. It adds energy so everything gets, goes faster. So that's the way I'm going to add energy. But I have a question for you. And, and I haven't phrased it exactly right. The question's fine, but the answer is I haven't phrased exactly right. I'm going to add 1.5 times 10 to the minus 21 joules of kinetic energy. Which will change? A, average kinetic energy. I should have said average because one of the things that you can see about this is something that you know and that the kinetic energy goes down to nearly zero. I see a 10 to the, I saw a 10 to the minus 25 there, which is really low compared to 10 to the minus 22. And it goes as high as around 1 times 10 to the minus 21. So the kinetic energy goes up as high as around 1 times 10 to the minus 21. And then it drops down to zero. And so the kinetic energy is going up and down as it oscillates. And the potential energy is going up and down. So asking about kinetic energy is, is not the best plan, and so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask you about average kinetic energy. So that's what this question is really about. Which will change? Average kinetic energy, average potential energy, total energy, all of the above, none of the above, 